If you want to know the best tool that I use on all of my talking head and dialogue footage to save me hours and days editing it, then this video is for you. It's called ReCut. It analyzes your footage and in just a few seconds determines where the silent parts are, removes those silent parts, and it saves loads of time. Let's check this out. Now, DaVinci Resolve Studio, the paid version, does have an option that can remove silent parts, but it takes more steps and you have to transcribe your whole video first, whereas ReCut does it all automatically. First, I'm gonna show you in real time how quick ReCut works, and then I'll go over a more in-depth look and how to customize the right settings for you. Let's drag and drop our talking head or our dialogue clip. ReCut has analyzed everything. Now we'll export a DaVinci Resolve timeline Press export, save in your preferred location, and your export is complete. Now that was pretty darn fast. Pop into Resolve, File, Import Timeline. There's our XML, Import, OK. And here's our talking head timeline with the silent parts removed. So popping over to ReCut, we can see that the original duration of this clip was 20 minutes, 27 seconds. After ReCut's magic, it's 14 minutes, 32 seconds without those silent parts with 113 cuts. That's a ton of footage that I otherwise would have had to play through that ReCut got rid of and quite a lot of cuts that I now don't have to make. So now that you've seen how fast and easy ReCut is to use, I'll show you how to customize your settings for the best results. So we drag our footage into the top part here. This is gonna start analyzing if we zoom in. We have all of these red sections here. The red areas show the silent parts and the blue shows the dialogue parts. Intensity adjusts the width of the red areas, AKA the silences. When it's set to super, it will make the cuts very tight without giving any space or silence at all in between cuts. Notice that when intensity is set to super, there are 549 cuts. That's a lot of cuts for this particular clip. And the duration is 10 minutes, 53 seconds without the silences. I prefer and I recommend choosing natural because that will give you a nice amount of breathing room between your cuts. When I bring it to natural, the cut amount changed to 165 cuts with a duration of 13 minutes, 40 seconds without silences. That's going to give us more of a natural feel. The threshold slider sets what the level of silence is. If you bring it to the right, you'll see more of your track is filled with silence. And if you bring it to the left, less of your track is considered silence. And I gotta say, I actually find threshold does a pretty good job on auto, so we can leave it at that. Now, this was the simple setting. If you wanna make further adjustments, click customize, which is gonna give you some additional options. So I'm gonna leave the threshold as is. For minimum duration, 0.5 seconds is fine. For padding, this is the space you wanna leave at the beginning and the end of your cuts. Right now the padding's locked, meaning if we adjust the left side, the right side's going to be adjusted the same amount. And you can see this in real time down here. If you want a little bit more room on the front end, the left and a little less on the right, you can just unclick this lock to customize as you wish. On the left side, that's basically like the breathing room after you finish a word at the end of a sentence or thought. So I like to leave a little bit of space somewhere around 0.6 is fine. And then on the right side, typically when you're doing something like a vlog style YouTube video, your cuts are gonna be pretty quick. I like to have this side a little tighter than the left around 0.3. So that means that the cut will take place pretty close to the starting word. Next, we have remove short audio spikes. So any clips that are shorter than this amount will be left out. And then up here, you can choose to remove silence. And doing that makes your cuts for you and gets rid of all of those silent parts. Once you have these settings customized the way you like, it will save them in ReCut. So next time you open it up and you bring in a different clip, they'll be saved, which is nice. If you wanna split your file up into multiple sections, you can click on sections here. You can adjust the split on silence slider here, and it will split all the different clips into segments. I don't use this ever, but it's nice to know it's there. Let's go to export. 
audio video. This is kind of cool. You can actually export a video so you can change your video type. You also have a few more options for exporting. Under resolution, you can change that too. The way I like to use ReCut is by exporting this clip with all of these silent parts cut out as a timeline. So let's click on timeline and click this drop down menu to choose our editor. We have Final Cut, Adobe Premiere, ScreenFlow, CapCut, quite a few options. We'll use DaVinci Resolve .xml. And we want to keep Keep Silent Segments unchecked. And if you had any muted tracks for some reason in your audio, you could choose to check mark Remove Muted Tracks. And press Export. Save your timeline wherever you'd like. I like to save it in the project I'm working on. Pop over to DaVinci Resolve. File import timeline. Here's our XML. Let's select it and choose import. Resolve's going to ask you if you want to change any of these settings. I leave them all as is and press OK. And there we go. ReCut has automatically created a sequence for you with a bunch of cuts and all of those silent parts removed. Pretty incredible that through using ReCut and its super simple automation, it's made a whole bunch of cut points in just a few seconds. And if you want to pick up ReCut for yourself, it's definitely worth it. The link is in the description below. And on a side note, if you're having any issues with relinking offline media, Will recently put out a video that solved an issue that a lot of people online were complaining about regarding getting XMLs to work in Resolve. It's a tutorial that shows you how to bring a Premiere tutorial into DaVinci Resolve and vice versa. But even if you're not working with Premiere at all, it's a really helpful video. I think every DaVinci Resolve editor needs to know how to do this. And I haven't seen any other tutorials out there on YouTube that show you how to. So I highly recommend you check it out. And if you want to know our favorite drive that we edit all of our video projects off of because it's super fast, it's small, and it's just so convenient. Or if you want to know any of the gear that we recommend and use, check out the description below. I hope you have a lovely day. Thank you for watching this one and we will see you in the next video.